Hi everyone, I'm here today to talk to you about 12 books that we can all get excited about, new releases for autumn, winter, this year. It was gonna be 10 books to be excited about, but then I found two more that I was excited about and then I decided I should stop before the list became hugely long. There are gonna be more books than this that I'm gonna discover and want to pick up. But for now, let's just talk about these 12. So these are 12 of my most anticipated releases. In fact, two of them, maybe even three of them by the time this video goes up, have come out. The rest are forthcoming and I have had a little sneak peek into 2023. We can also expect new books from Max Porter. If the rumours are true, we can expect a new book from Sarah Waters next year, which I am super excited about. Um, I have a new book coming out in the new year, which I'll be able to talk about in a little while, but not in this video. There are new books forthcoming from Kay O'Neill as well, and the long-awaited debut novel from Alice Slater called Death of a Bookseller, which is coming in the spring. I'm excited about all of those, but I'm also excited about the ones that I'm actually gonna talk about now. Lots of you ask how I discover new releases, I work in the publishing industry, so publicists get in touch with me with press releases, but I also do my own research, which you can do as well. You can go to any publisher's website, scroll down to the bottom, and normally at the bottom, next to the Contact Us links, there are also links to catalogues where you can see forthcoming titles. A trick is to also go on um, an online bookshop, type in the name of a favourite author and then organise it by publication date and that should show any future releases that are scheduled for publication and have all of their data listed online. So that is my tip. So I'm going to talk to you about these books. I'll list them in the description box down below. I do have copies of about half of them. As for the rest, some of those have covers and some of them don't. If they do have covers, I will insert them here. So let's dive in and do it in rough chronological order. The first book is one that's just come out and it's by Aisha Malik and I loved her book This Green and Pleasant Land which came out a couple of years ago. This one is called The Movement and it's about a character called Sara Javid and she's just really annoyed by the world. She would like everybody to just shut up. So one day she takes her own advice and she stops speaking but what she didn't anticipate was that this would start the beginning of a movement which completely runs out of her control. It says the silent movement sparks outrage in its opposers, global structures start to shift, and the lives of those closest to Sarah, as well as strangers inspired by her act, begin to unravel. It's time for the world to reconsider what it really means to have a voice. So I'm intrigued to see how all of this is handled. That is the first book that I wanted to shout out. Next is one that I have started reading and it's a new book by Kitval which came out as I'm filming this last week, I think. It is called Without Warning and Only Sometimes Scenes from an Unpredictable Childhood. I absolutely adored Kit's book, My Name is Leon. I listened to the audiobook of that one as well because that's narrated by Lenny Henry and it's one of the best audiobooks I've ever listened to. Kit narrates her own audiobook and there's just something really special about listening to a memoir when the author is narrating it themselves. This is about her life growing up in Birmingham in the 1960s. Her mum was part of this movement that believed the world would end in 1975. So everything was kind of geared towards the world ending and her dad was spending money that they didn't have. And then 1975 came around and the world did not end and then they had to cope with that. I just trust Kit's writing very, very much and I have only just started listening to the audiobook but I am enjoying it so far and I will be talking about it in a wrap up soon. When this video goes up, this book will just have been released. It's out at the very end of August. It's one of the most beautiful covers. Hi, it's Editing Jen. I just realised that I never said the name of this book. So this is The Marriage Portrait by Maggie O'Farrell. I have enjoyed so many of Maggie's novels in the past. There are a couple that I didn't get on with as well, some of her older titles, but her most recent ones, I Am, I Am, I Am, and Hamnet, absolutely adored. This cover is designed by Emma Eubank. I just wanted to give her a quick shout out. I don't wanna to know too much about this, 
but like Hamlet it is historical fiction it's set in the 1500s in Renaissance Italy and I'm just going to read you the very very top of the blurb it says in the winter of 1561 Lucrezia Duchess of Ferrara is taken on an unexpected visit to a country villa with her husband Alfonso as they sit down to dinner in the icy hall it occurs to Lucrezia that Alfonso has a sinister purpose in bringing her here he intends to kill her I don't want to know more than that I don't want to know. All right, so those are the three books that are out already, and now we're moving into September releases. And I was looking through Daunt Books catalog. Daunt Books is a series of bookshops in London, but they also have a publishing imprint. And I saw this book and it really piqued my interest. It's cheating slightly because it actually came out in 1966, I think, but it was out of print. It is now being reissued and it has an introduction by Jen Ashworth, whose books I've enjoyed such as ghosted again beautiful cover so this one is a helping hand by celia dale and i was interested because the blurb says that it's perfect for fans of shelly jackson roald dahl and muriel spark and muriel spark in particular i really love so kind of dark witty horror so this is a novel about two characters called josh and Maisie evans they are middle-aged they say their lives are unremarkable but then their elderly lodger flo dies and leaves them her estate they go to Italy on holiday to kind of celebrate this and relax a bit and there they meet a wealthy widow and her niece and they bond over ice cream and for some strange reason they decide why don't you come and live with us? We have this house, it's big, you should move in. And I don't think that that's a good idea and I think that maybe terrible things then happen. I'm excited about it. Next is a book that's also coming out in September, but I don't have a copy of it yet. This is Layla and the Blue Fox by Kieran Millwood Hargrave, and it is illustrated by Tom DeFreston. I love both Kieran and Tom's writing and Tom's art. This is their second collaboration together in this series. The first book in that series was called Julia and the Shark, which came out last year and ended up being one of my favourite books of last year and absolutely emotionally destroyed me and I am ready to be emotionally destroyed all over again. Let me find the blurb for you. It says, she was very tired. She lay down, her soft head on her soft paws. The sunset licked her face. The snow covered her like a blanket. Fox wakes and begins to walk. She crosses ice and snow over mountains and across frozen oceans, encountering bears and birds beneath the endless daylight of an Arctic summer, navigating a world that is vast, wild and wondrous. Meanwhile, Layla embarks on a journey of her own, finding her way to the mother who left her. On a breathtaking journey across the sea, Layla discovers herself and the mother she thought she'd lost with the help of the determined little fox. I can already tell this book is gonna make me cry a lot and I don't care. Next on my list is a book I also don't have a copy of and it's a collection of short stories called The Six Who Came to Dinner. I will insert the cover here. This one is coming out in October. I am an absolute sucker for novels or short stories that are about dinner parties, where people are kind of navigating etiquette. Maybe some people don't know each other very well. Maybe people are trying to get subtle digs at each other. Maybe people had arguments before they arrived. Maybe the couple who are hosting are having hushed arguments in the kitchen, hoping that nobody else can hear. I just think that it's a great premise for a story. And that is what one of these particular stories is. As I said, it's a collection. The blurb says, the village cleaning lady who holds everyone's house keys opens a boot to find some unexpectedly dead contents. A vengeful dinner party host serves more than just a roast to her six guests. And driven to distraction by his young new wife, a man resorts to two grisly acts in a gripping reimagining of a famous Irish ballad. I don't read a whole lot of short story collections that are centered around crime or are thrillers. I was recently asked for a recommendation of short story collections that did that. And my favorite is definitely Revenge by Yoko Ogawa, which is translated from the Japanese by Steven Snyder. And I love that one so much. So I'm hoping that I will enjoy this one as much as I loved that one. Next is another book that's coming out in October and I do have a copy of this one. So this is Maureen Fry and the Angel of the North, which is the third book in the Harold Fry trilogy. So the first one was The Unlikely Pilgrimage of Harold Fry, which I just looked up. It came out a whole 10 years ago. Where does time go? I don't know, 10 years ago. And I think it was long listed for the Booker Prize that year. If I'm remembering correctly, I remember being told to read it by a bookseller at Nomad Books in Fulham when I was doing an author signing there. And I read it and absolutely 
loved it. I have a real soft spot for this series. So the first one is The Unlikely Pilgrimage of Harold Fry. The audiobook is narrated by Jim Broadbent. Recommend. Then there was the sequel, The Love Song of Miss Queenie Hennessy, which again, emotionally destroyed me. Are we sensing a theme? And then this one is Maureen Fry, Harold's wife's mini pilgrimage, walking to the Angel of the North. Um, the reason I have a soft spot for this series is because I think I read it at just the right time, the first one, and then my granddad passed away in 2014 and there was something about Harold that really, really reminded me of my granddad. He was also someone who loved to walk. Um, he is obviously from the Northeast and that is where part of that novel is set. And I remember writing to Rachel to tell her like, how much Harold reminded me of my granddad and at that point, Rachel and I had never met. We, we have since met and, and we have filmed um, a podcast together, which I'll link down below if you want to listen to. Um, and we know each other now. But at that time, I didn't know her. And I was just reaching out to be like, your book spoke to me. And she was so lovely. And she sent me a copy of Harold Fry dedicated to my gran after the death of my granddad, which said, Dear Sylvia, in memory of Charlie, a man who loved to walk, and it is my gran's most prized possession. And my gran has since gone to see Rachel, I think it was at the Durham Book Festival, and she took her chocolates and she said, you know my granddaughter and you gave me this book and they had a hug and it's just, it warms my heart a lot. So I'm excited to read the third installment and so is my gran. So I need to read this so I can send it to my gran so that she can read it too. Next is another book that's coming out in October and it is The Fish by Joanne Stubbs. This is a climate crisis novel and it's being published by Fairlight Books. It's about two women, a couple called Kathy and Effie, and in their permanently flooded garden in Cornwall they start to grow rice instead of vegetables because it's the only thing that will grow. Then thousands of miles away, expat Margaret is struggling to adjust to life in Kuala Lumpur, which is now a coastal city, and in New Zealand two teenagers marvel at the extreme storms hitting their island. So I think it's all of these disconnected stories that are brought together through discussions of the planet it and I'm very interested in picking this one up. I'm hoping that you can't hear Mr. M, he is on a work call and whenever he's on a work call he, he shouts so loudly he doesn't realise that he's doing it. Anyway, we plod on. The next book is a non-fiction book that's also coming out in October and it's by Daughter Norse and I have really enjoyed her fiction in the past so I'm really keen to see how she writes memoir. This is translated from the Danish by Caroline Waite um, and there is a place in Denmark where two tides meet each other so it is really weird. It's two currents that meet so there's a line that goes out through the sea and it's in our house and she grew up ne near there so this is a book that is talking about her relationship with the people who live there and also her relationship with the sea and as you know I love reading about people's relationship with the sea so yes please onto the list it goes also coming out in October is a book that I am part of. It's an anthology and it's in collaboration with Cunning Folk magazine, whose journal have published me before and also with Liminal 11. So bringing together a book which is called Spiritus Monday. I will insert the cover here. I have a piece of nonfiction in here called Accidental Displeasure, which is um, talking about writing using voice to text, which is something that I do a lot now. And it also has work in by um, Naomi Ishiguru, Leonie Ross, Stephanie Victoire, Rebecca Tomas, um, Alice Slater, lots of people. I will link it in the description box down below and you can read the full contributor list. Now we're moving on to books that are scheduled for publication in January 2023. Um, and the first one is a novel by Kirsty Logan, which is called Now She Is a Witch. It's about two women, Lux and Elsie. It says Lux has lost everything when Elsie finds her alone in the woods. Her family, her lover, her home all burned. The world is suspicious of women like her, neither maiden nor mother, but Lux is cunning. She knows how to exploit people's expectations, how to blend into the background, and she knows a lot about poisons. Very exciting. And then finally, my last one in this list of 12 is a book that I have been waiting for for years, as have many of us, and it is the second novel from Ayabami Adebayo, who is the author of Stay With Me, which was shortlisted for the Women's Prize 
a fair few years ago. Again, Ayabami and I have filmed, um, or recorded rather, a podcast together, which we did a couple of years ago, and I'll link that in the description box down below. And she was talking about her novel then, and I have been on, you know, the edge of my seat since then. So I'm very glad to finally be able to read it soon. And her new novel is called A Spell of Good Things. Eniola is tall for his age, a boy who looks like a man. His father has lost his job, so Eniola spends his days running errands for the local tailor, collecting newspapers and begging, dreaming of a big future. Wariola is a golden girl, the perfect child of a wealthy family, she's a doctor, and then after violence shatters a family party, these two characters are thrown together. It says that Ayabami Adebayo shines her light on Nigeria and the gaping divide between the haves and the have-nots and the shared humanity that lives in between. Yes, yes, yes please, thank you. So that is a list of 12 books that are on my radar, some of which I have in my hands and will be getting to soon, others I will be getting to in due course. As I mentioned, I'll list them down below. I would love to know if any of these are some of your most anticipated releases for autumn, winter. If not, which ones are. If you're new to my channel and would like to subscribe, it would be lovely to have you here. And if you enjoy my content and would like to consider supporting me on Patreon, that's also very kind. Link to that is in the description box down below. Support over on Patreon means that I can keep making free content for everybody on here. And there are a few extra things over on Patreon too. I hope that you're all having a good week. I will end this video here and I will speak to you very soon. Sending love. Bye.